I prepped it in a very messy way. Same, same. Oh, tell me you're engaged. You guys know what you guys want to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, this is Hong Dango. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have a huge honor to have the legendary hairstylist Sir Snowman here with me. Literally, I was begging him for a long time. I said, please come to do a hair tutorial for me. Finally, he agreed. If you don't know who Serge is, you really look it up. He's one of the most talented hairdresser in many decades already. And Serge, anything you want to add? Well, thank you for having me. Thank it's you. It's been for a dream since you've been doing that channel. You know, for me to do something with you, and I always love working with you. It's thank always you. fun. We always feed on each other's creativity, and it's just a fun process. So hopefully, you will enjoy it too. I hope you really enjoyed the video and give search to China, the model, and I a lot of love. Subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow all of us on Instagram as well. And you guys really should look up search work if you're a hair lover, especially all the work you've done in the past and now you will learn a lot from him. Thank you so much for the support. Hello, I'm with Georgina and Hong just finished a makeup that has a little uh, 60s inspiration and I'm going to do the hair that goes with it, would be the first version of it, which will be pretty much back combed, kind of all bouffant in some ways, but a modernized version with a texture that you probably could achieve at home. So I'm going to start with putting a little mousse on, which is always the key for me to do the preparation. Once I put the mousse on, I'll do the blow dry. I might just do the top because I will tell you the tricks afterwards of using a hairpiece, which is always the key to really do something 60s with the volume already prepped without over combing the hair. So I'm going to start with the mousse. I always recommend not to overload the hair with products. You can always add on. So I put a little bit. I put on the edges, literally where I want the lift to be, which would be all the front. And most of the time, I'll do a little bit on the ends. I'm not going to do it all over because, again, I'm not going to use the back over here. And then I will put it on the crown. So I don't put a lot, I just put enough. And then what I will do, I'll just massage a little bit just so it goes where I need it to be. What I will do, now I will comb it, just so whatever is on the front can be spread out on the rest. So now that the mousse is on and spread out wherever I want it, I'm gonna use a medium size round brush and I'm gonna start blowing dry the hair just you know partly in the front randomly it doesn't have to be super precise because it's gonna be a texture that's not perfectly smoothed out. All right. Thank you. So now I'm done blowing dry the front part of Georgina's hair. As you can see, I used mousse today. Most of the time I would use mousse and the mousse that I use is a mousse that doesn't really dry crunchy. So it depends on the kind of hair that you have. If you have very fine hair and you're used to use gel, but make sure it doesn't get too hard as a texture. You still need to be able to have a texture that's touchable. So you can use both, either or. My preference is towards a mousse because it's just a little lighter and it just makes it a little easier just to work with than a gel for me. As you can see, I didn't take big sections. I really went randomly all over and I think sometimes it's easier also for people to just do what they're used to do. And the key also is the front edges because you will see I'm gonna separate the back and I'm gonna probably pin it up put something on it just to have support for the hairpiece that I'm gonna add afterwards. But the key on that hairdo is to really get the lift here. So what I would recommend, you always take the front piece and you always blow it dry in some ways, as far down as you can. So therefore, even if you have a color right here, it will balance it off and you will get that lift already without any back combing. So obviously on Georgina, she has that length, which could, we could still work with her length 
but we want to overdo it with, in terms of a glamazon, section by section, and I will take big sections because it doesn't have to be too wavy, it's just to really smooth out the ends that I feel will, will be helpful. So what you do sometimes, like people don't know how to always use the Wong, you don't have to just know how to use the Marcel thing. You can even do that all the way to the end and then it gives you a little bit of uh, movement on the end. And as you can see, the hair gets a little more shiny as you do it. And if it doesn't come out perfectly at first, then you do it again and you do it again. And where you feel like your hair might, like instance, most of the time you can have a part in the middle or a part on the side. And if you want to upset it a little bit, then you'll go on the roots of it and you just give the lift. It's almost like if you had put a roller on and then you leave the roller on for a while and it would give you that kind of lift. And if you want to turn profile a little bit, Georgina, you can see the little ridge that it gives you. So that's the roller would give you if you let it set for quite a while. Then I will do it only for one more part on Georgina's because the rest of her hair will be put into a bun. And same thing, I will do with that again. And it will create, if you want to turn profile, it creates the same, same ridge. And I'm going to do that on both sides with big sections. Just to help the wave. And to get that support right here. And right there. And see, it just gives you a little movement right away. That can be helpful afterwards. And I'll do the side on the back. I might use that part or I might not, but I do rather it to be prepped instead of left and done. And that's it in terms of the curling iron. So it will give you those sections. Now that I've done the blow dry part of it and the curling iron, I'm gonna use the hairpiece. So for the hairpiece, either you can use a half head. What I do most of the time, I use actually a full wig, which sometimes is actually easier to find than the half piece. So in order to do that, to avoid having to back comb the hair too much, what I do, I have a little trick. So I just do a separation pretty much of where I want the lift to start appearing. So most of the time it will be maybe an inch and a half or two inches from the front. I do the separation and as you can see if you want to turn your head ever so slightly and I will do the same thing with the sides and the back. As I was saying earlier on prepping, I always leave a little bit of the back. I might use it, I might not use it, but I want to have it out there. So then I will do this. The same separation on the other side. It doesn't have to be perfectly done in terms of the separation itself because it kind of helps blending the actual wig afterwards for me. Then what I will do now, brush it up and I'm gonna pile it all up on the top of the head like if I was doing some kind of a version of a top bun. And that will be the part that will become the support. Okay. Now I will tease it. And what I do, you can find that pretty much in every beauty supply. I don't even know how you call, we call that now. I call that feelers. I know people call that rats, I think, right, also, which I never loved the idea of that, but anyway, I'm using it. So I'm gonna use it around the actual ponytail. Then all you use hairpins, and if you wanna show, turn profile, like right now, I'm doing it in a messy way 
all of that doesn't really matter how perfectly combed it is or not because it's going to be under the actual wig. So don't lose too much time with that. Then I use the other part and I'll do this. I roll it and I hide it with the rest. It needs to be pretty well anchored at that level here because the wig is going to really rely on that weight right here just to stay stable. So now I have the wig. As you can tell, the match is pretty good. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. There's always little tricks with, you know, colors that you can add on the front of the hair, but the closer, the better. So I prepped it pretty much similarly as I prepped Georgina's hair. I just put a little mousse on it, not too much because of the wig, it's, you know, the hair is not um, the same texture exactly. So I just put a little bit on the roots also of it, blew it dry and did a little bit of a curling iron on the end just to give it that kind of contemporary texture. So the front part will have that kind of classic feel to it, but then the ends need to have that kind of very easy, modern kind of texture. So now that I have that wig, I will put it in the front, directly in front here. And as you can probably tell already, you see the lift that it does naturally because of the rats underneath and the ponytail, you almost don't need to tease that much. So the key now is to really anchor it where it should be, right here. And you stretch it. couple of hairpins, one here, you go through it, sometimes it's easier than others just to get through it. What I like to do is I like to twist without hurting the hair a little bit the hair itself so that way it's really not going to slip and then you just do, do that. And so as you can see the base of the wig right here will be hidden by the little bit of hair that I've left over it. So that will hide the base of it. You can see the wig itself right here. I do the same thing. I twist the hair with the hairpin and then I anchor it in there. And it's not gonna go anywhere. And I'll do it on the other side. Make sure that when you do the wig like that, you bring it forward because it will have a tendency to move back. So overdo it ever so slightly, just so it gives you enough movement. And I'll do a couple of more. And there we go. One more in the back. So as you can see, it's not that many hairpins, it's just a few. So I didn't do that much already, and you can tell right away that it has that kind of fullness already. Now what I'm gonna do, obviously I have to blend everything else together now. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a hairspray, which I always call, it's not a hairspray, it's an instant volumizing spray. I call it bicomb in a bottle. It just gives you that much more texture. It's not a, like a hairspray where you can really comb your hair through it. It just gives it that much more crunchiness without making it too dry, just so when you tease it, it's secured. And you can actually also use it on the wig if the wig is too soft or too silky. So now that the wig is attached to her head and then the front part is left, you know, with being her own hair, I'm gonna treat the whole head like if it's just her own hair. So I'm gonna brush the front, try to blend 
with the rest of her hair. And as you can see, if you look profile, you can see by combing it back, it kind of blends by itself. The difference of the length doesn't really matter as much, as long as it's not obviously length that doesn't blend with the rest. But right now with Georgina's hair, the fact that now there's some layers on Georgina's hair, it doesn't really matter with the length, that it's gonna blend itself in pretty easily. So I'm gonna brush both sides. And now I'm gonna start back combing the front. And to back comb it, I always do it in a classic way. I start from the bottom, up, bottom, up. Same thing here. The side. So the key for me with the wig and her own hair, I like to take a bit of her own hair and the part of the wig, at least on the edges, and I back comb it together so it's anchored together. Same thing here. As you can see, that's the wig and that's her own hair. Then you do the back combing underneath with the amount of volume that you actually wish to achieve. The fact that I put already the rats underneath, the volume on the top on the crown for me is almost enough. So I'm not gonna overdo the come back combing there. I'm just gonna continue the other side. As you can see, I use a tail comb, but some people have an easier time to actually back comb the hair with a brush. A Mason Pearson brush, you know, or a version of that brush also could be helpful for someone. And you do the same thing, and it could be underneath. And obviously, some people always ask me, how do you smooth it up? What you don't really see doesn't matter to be smoothed up. The top layers are always the key to finish a look. And so now what I will do, I'll use a little bit of hairspray everywhere, not too much so I can still comb it through, but just to give it that much more setting. So now that I have the shape, of course, it looks big right now. Now we're gonna refine it. And I'm gonna start with the brush to just brush over. I'm not gonna brush it underneath so I don't undo the back combing. And it's important when you do that, just to keep in mind the shape you want to have. Right now, I love that it has that kind of feeling, so I'm just gonna emphasize it. And if you feel like the hair is clumpy, what I do, I always separate it a little bit. That helps you just to give that kind of unfinished feel on the end, just to give it that modern touch to it. And don't worry too much about combing, the back combing out, because as long as the underneath is there, your support is there. Then once I'm done with this, what I will do, I'll use my tail comb again. And I will just perfect the parts that I feel needs a little more polishing. And I will use also the tip of the comb to lift it up where I feel like it's needed. A little bit of hairspray. Thank you. You look at 
me now. Then once you're in the front and you look at the whole proportions, I don't have a mirror, so I'm just gonna do the best that I can with that. But do the volume and lift it up where you feel that it's needed. Once in a while, you will see that you can, like you can see here, you can see a little bit through it. Then comb over it again. And don't hesitate to lift the inside till you see that it's completely filled in. So now that's just a little easy look just to go and do the groceries on a Saturday or on a Sunday. <laughs> so now we're done with Georgina on the first look, which is a little 60s inspired. I would say Ursula Andress, James Bond girl. If you don't know who that is, just Google. But just have a little fun with it. And obviously it can be done so many different ways. You can mess it up a little more and hair has to leave. So if it gets a little messy during the evening or the party, then you just go with it. So now we're gonna to go to a different version. I'm gonna do something that has more of a little bardo feel to it with more of a sweep in the front. It will be the same kind of era, but just a slight version of that. So it's gonna be pretty much the same prep. I just removed the top bun with uh, the feelers, but I'm gonna use them again. What you can see, I'm using pretty much all her hair. I'm just leaving just the, the front pieces in case I use them. So, you do a ponytail again all the way on the top the fact that i'm using all her hair i'm gonna use a rubber band that's more like a, a hook just so it's a little stronger and same thing i'm doing it pretty close to the front center it as much as you can anchored and now the fact that I'm using most of her hair, same thing, I'm wrapping it. One hairpin in the front. And I'm securing it in the back. And again, that will be used as my support for the wig, right? So the front pieces that I'm using right now, I don't know if I'm gonna keep the whole thing, but it will help me blending the wig in. So now the wig has been prepared before. The same kind of prep than the one before. Mousse, a little blow dryer, a little curling iron. But the way it was done was with a sweep. So you will see it now all her face will be framed with the sweep. So now I went to get the second wig and I'm gonna put it pretty far up. So literally, mostly on the hairline, right? Then I will start anchoring it. So same thing, anchor it wherever you feel that you want it to sit. Right now, I want it to sit really far forward. Don't worry too much about the front right now. It will be a little messy, but that's gonna be controlled afterwards once it's all placed. So one thing that I do, I always check the two sides and I pull it because there's always a stretch in the wig. The more you stretch it and the way you pin it, it will always lift up a little bit afterwards. And I do the back. Then I do a little more on that side. So it's only like a few pins only. And you can see the bun underneath give that volume. Now, unlike the first look, I'm gonna keep it way more messy and less structured just so there's a more modern feel to it. So as you can see, the front of her hair is mixed in right now. So I can see that there's a little bit of difference with the color. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use ever so slightly a marker. This one is from Touchback and will give all the information on the Hang's uh, list of products that are being used. And what you use, you use the marker just from the roots or wherever you want to give more dimension. Right now, I'm just doing it from the top and I'm just giving it a little bit of dimension and sometimes it just takes a little time. You just do it over. As you can see, it's darkening it ever so slightly and I'm blending literally the color of the wig with, with their own hair. Combing it ever so slightly. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the, the other side. And that should be enough. Now, I'm gonna give it that kind of over swept feel to it. I'm gonna again tease the wig right here with the part of the front of her hair. And I'm going to play with the front part. Playing with it and that you play. With it till you find a comfortable placement that it's flattering to your face. Clip it temporarily with some of those flat clips so it doesn't give any bend to the hair. Look at it in the front and see if it's proportioned. Now that I have that placement, what I like with that kind of look is to do that half up and half down that people always like to do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take both sides, I'm gonna spray it first. If you have a little bit of a colic, those are great. You just put a little spray, put the clip over it, right on the root. So that will just help that part just to really be stabilized in that way. And the rest. Thank you. So now that it has set, for a little while. It should have that movement already. I'll undo the other side too. Then what you do, you take each side with your hands and then you try to put it in the nape of the neck, if you want to turn profile ever so slightly. In the nape of the neck, you just anchor it with a hairpin. The wig should help you get some more grab in there and I'm gonna give you a little trick sometimes those hairpins kind of slip out you twist it that little part when coming out will just get stuck in the hair a little bit so you use one and then you do it and it's not gonna come out So all you have to do at the end of the day on the, that kind of look is really to play with the texture of it. I always like to use my hands just to separate the hair and then just to give it that feel that you like, right? So here, for instance, instead of having the piece that falls down in your hair face completely, I'll just comb underneath ever so slightly. I'll use a little bit of hairspray to secure it. Then I will play with it 
and let it just take its placement. Then play with it. Finally, I will remove that. And as you can see now, it's really well set. And you play with the textures and the volume. And now the volume right here, just make it airy. Just don't have, you don't have to make it perfectly even everywhere. It's whatever you feel makes it more sexy, easy. Finish it with some hairspray. Hairspray is always the key to it. And it's a week, you know, don't hesitate to put as much as you want on it. So now we're done. We have that look, play with it, make it even more disheveled if you want to, and have fun with it. So this is the final second look. I hope you enjoyed it. And what do you think, Hong? I think it's amazing. Thank you sir, so much for coming to the channel. And thank you, Georgina, joining us for this. I hope you guys enjoy search work. Of course we all do. And don't forget to follow search and Georgina on Instagram as well. Also, everything search using, I will try to list everything on the description box for you guys to find out. Thank you.